going on guys we're gonna do a casual review of ufc 259 this is just going over the fights that did catch my attention again i am not an expert but i am well into uh, ufc man I, i've been going at it um i've been watching ufc now throughout the summer obviously it was the only sport that was available and now i'm kind of into it so let's do a little casual review first and foremost let's just talk about the fights that really caught my attention islam at lightweight man against Drew dober crushed it completely dominated that fight he just had ground control the whole exact the whole time i would love to see this guy fight against charles Oliveira, or i want to see him fight you know um actually let's put him against tony ferguson i would love to see him fight tony i think that that would be the fight for him kid showed that man he's coming from the dagestani kind of camp man obviously his his coach his main coach is 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 uh is khabib so you already know that this guy knows his stuff or he's coming from very high pedigree so that's just one thing that i kind of wanted to point out kind of like an honorable mention and i think this guy needs to get some really top contenders to either show us that he's the real deal or hey slow it down a little bit you're not there yet let's go real quick to the bantamweight championship fight man it was crazy Aljamain Sterling against Peter Yan. Peter Aljamain came really oh, fast and and he just went nonstop in the first round. Tried to take down Peter a whole bunch of times. It looked, Peter. I mean, let's be honest with this fight. Peter had it under control. Um, you guess you could say that Aljo won that first round, but the amount of energy that he spent on that first round cost him throughout the fight. The crazy thing about this fight, and one thing, and before we talk about actually the crazy thing that happened, let's talk about kind of some of the things that I didn't like Aljo doing. That spinning back fist get, get, kept getting caught. He kept giving his back to Peter. It was just really uh, frustrating to see as somebody who who, who was rooting for Aljo. Um, his takedowns, he wasn't setting up the takedowns, so he was like going high and low. He wasn't swinging and then going for it. It just wasn't set up. It was very predictable to see that when he was going for the takedowns. And I just think that his game plan wasn't crisp. And if it wasn't for the crazy thing that happened, which was an illegal knee to Aljo. As Aljo was on the ground, he he, he was it didn't look like he was gonna try to get up. He was he, his knee was down. In order for you to knee an opponent who's down, his knees have to be off the floor and his hands also. His hands were off the floor, but there was still a knee down. And it looked like he was, you know, if you if you if you if you take the the knee and when you're playing football, that's kind of what it looked like. Aljo was still down. The ref warned Peter, Peter, he is down. Don't hit him with a knee. And his corner, I guess there was some type of misinterpretation because I thought that maybe, in my opinion, I think they thought that since his hands weren't on the ground anymore, that he was good to go. He was free game. And, you know, he lost the title because of that. Um, to anyone who's saying that Aljo should have gotten up or oh, he's been hit hard or whatever, he did that perfectly, man. Like, not giving him an excuse, but you just can't. He, he was beat. He was tired. The fight was not going to go on his way. He gets up there. And now, after getting hit with a knee illegally, you don't know where the hell was he. He could have been on another world. He could have been concussed. And for him to get up and continue that fight, that, that was not the right thing to do. The right thing what he did was stay on the ground, man. Uh, take this win, even though he probably feels like he doesn't deserve it. And regroup for a next fight because they are going to fight again in a rematch. I loved what Aljo did. He just took off the belt. He threw it on the floor. He was like, man, this is not my belt. You're the champ now, man. Whether you like it or not, I appreciate that. And um, I can't wait to see that rematch. I'm 1,000% I'm sure that Aljo is going to come with a better plan. I think that he can beat Peter. He just needed to be a little bit more patient. He did. A, he rushed that up. Um, if, if I've never seen Aljo in a championship fight, in a five-round fight. I'm, I, I don't know if that was his first fight, but you can see that, man. He, he needs to prepare for a five round fight and not just try to you know win round one winning round one is cool but um you still got four more of the rounds to go and uh i think that that was not a close fight uh moving on to the women's uh featherweight fight 
Amanda, being Amanda, she just completely dominated uh, um, her opponent, whoever that girl was. She looked like a vampire. Um, she needs to not ever try to fight Amanda again. That was not even close. That was straight domination. Amanda is Amanda, and Amanda was doing Amanda things. Goat status, and, and it is what it is. On to the main event. Uh, it was the light heavyweight championship defense between John Blahovich and Izzy Adesanya. I'm sorry if I butchered John's name, but it was awesome. I think that's exactly what we all been dying to see when it comes to Izzy. Somebody fighting Izzy is showing him the MMA aspect of, of fighting where it's not just standing up with him. I don't think there's anybody in the UFC who could stand up with Izzy and live to tell about it and win that fight. I really don't. This guy is just one of the most accurate punches that I've seen as far as I've been watching this UFC stuff. And um, I loved Jan's game, man. Jan didn't rush to take him down. He pressed him a couple of cages, a couple of the rounds early. There was no rushing in. He knew... Um, one thing that kind of caught my attention was he said, he's not as fast as I thought he was. He did hit harder. That's what John said about Izzy. Um, and in the later rounds, it's just the weight and the muscle of Jan overpowered Izzy. I'd never seen Izzy, you know, at one point where you, with a round five started, Jan was tired. You could see that he was fatigued, but Izzy was fatigued too. I'd never seen Izzy sweat so much in my life. He was sweating. Uh, he was tired. And um, Jan in rounds four and five, he was winning those rounds clearly. I, I, I could easily see where round four, it was a a, a nine, eight, um, a, a, a 10, eight, or, 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 you know, something of that sort. Definitely the fifth round was a 10, eight round without question. And I can, I can make the argument that the, the, fourth, the fourth round was also a 10, eight round. Uh, I think that Izzy could be a contender in the middle in, in the light heavyweight, but he went about it to about about it all wrong. To be honest, he needed to put on that weight. He needed to take his time to challenge for that for that um light heavyweight title, man. Just like John Jones is putting weight and he's respecting, and he's taking his time to fight at heavyweight. I feel like Izzy just went up there. And he was like, man, I'm just gonna just cruise through this. And that's not how it works, man. Those guys are, I mean, Jan is a champion for a reason, man. He's put in work. And you can, you know, as, as much as Izzy is, is one of the goats, one of the greats, um, you can't you can't just do that, man. You can't just go up a, up a class. Imagine, I mean, in the fight, yeah, uh, Peter, uh, not Peter, I'm sorry. Uh, John came in, he probably was weighing, he was weighing 205, weighing in. Adesanya was weighing 200, weighing in. As soon as the fight started in the actual fight, you best believe that Jan was probably 220, 225, even 230. And Adesanya but probably was the exact same weight, man. That probably was his natural walking weight. You don't do that. You just It's just if a man could grapple you, a man could take you down, that was it. I felt like he was already wearing down Adesanya as soon as he was getting him on the cage. It kind of reminded me of that Usman technique. Um... And yeah, man, it's just back to the drawing board again for Adesanya. And, and I was excited and I was actually, I predicted uh, Jan to win that fight. And it just happens to be that way. Um, that's my review on the things. Big shout out to Dominic Cruz, man. I, I enjoyed the fact that he got a win. I, th I mean, it didn't look great, but uh, at least he got a win. It, it, was, it was a split decision. Um, let's see what happens to that guy here. Honestly... I think he should just stick to commentating or teaching people how to uh, the moves that 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 the, that the championship matches are happening. You know, on his ESPN breakdown. But um, yeah, let's see what happens when he faces better competition. And uh, that's it, guys. That's my review of of UFC 259. It's a casual review, uh, from a casual. Let's see. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.